Hello, I'm Rick Wicklin from SAS Research and Development, and today I'm pleased to present 10 Tips for Simulating Data with SAS. SAS software provides many tools for simulating data. The tools are spread across several SAS products. This presentation focuses on efficiently simulating data by using the SAS Data Step and SAS IML procedure. These tips are taken from the book Simulating Data with SAS. This presentation is a quick overview of a SAS Global Forum paper. Please read the paper for the details. Tip number one, stop using RANUNI and the other old random number functions, and use only the RAND function, or the RANGEN function in SAS IML software. The RAND function has much better statistical properties than the older functions. If you are going to generate millions of numbers, Use RAND. The RAND function is easy to use. You use the stream init call to set the random number seed. Then call RAND with the name of the distribution and any parameters. This slide shows statements that generate random variates from the normal, uniform, and binomial distributions. The RAND gen function in SAS IML is similar but it fills up an entire vector or matrix with random numbers in a single call. Shown are statements that fill a matrix with random draws from a gamma distribution and that fill a vector with uniform variate. Tip number two, use the table distribution for simulating categorical variables. The table distribution enables you to specify the probability of choosing each of K categories. In the data step, you can put the probabilities into an array and use the of keyword to specify the probabilities. The RAND function returns an integer in the range 1 through k. The SAS IML version is similar, except that the probabilities are specified by using a vector. In either case, the frequencies of the sampled data are close to the specified probabilities. A frequency analysis of the sample shows that about 50% of the observations have a value 1, about 30% have the value 2, and about 20% have the value 3. Tip number 3. Learn how to simulate from finite mixture distributions. Suppose that you model a distribution as a finite mixture of three normal distributions. You can use the table distribution to generate a random number 1 through 3. Based on that value, you can generate x from a normal distribution with a particular mean and variance. The resulting sample is a draw from a finite mixture with specified mixing probabilities. A histogram of the sample shows three peaks that correspond to three component distributions. Tip number four, construct complex distributions from simple ones. If you look in the SAS documentation, you might mistakenly conclude that SAS software supports only about 20 distributions. <laughs> Not true. You can combine these simple distributions to generate mixtures of distributions, clustered data, and more exotic distributions. You can also write short programs that implement acceptance rejection algorithms for truncated distributions, or a program that simulates from any cumulative distribution function. Tip number five, use SAS IML software for multivariate simulation. The data step is a powerful tool for simulating data from univariate or uncorrelated multivariate distributions. However, the SAS IML language, which is a matrix language, is the tool of choice for simulating data from correlated multivariate distributions. SAS IML contains many built-in functions for simulating data from standard multivariate distributions and supports the matrix computations that are required to create algorithms that sample from less common multivariate distributions. For example, this program simulates 1,000 observations from a trivariate normal distribution. All you need to do is specify the mean vector and the covariance matrix. The RAND normal function 
returns a 1000 by 3 matrix where each row is an observation for the three correlated variables. You can compute sample statistics on the data matrix to convince yourself that the simulated data are correct. The mean of the simulated data is close to the population mean. The covariance of the simulated data is close to the population covariance. Tip number six. To carry out a Monte Carlo study, do the following. One, draw a sample from a known distribution. Two, compute a statistic on the sample. Three, repeat this process many times to create an approximation to the sampling distribution of the statistic. How can we do this efficiently in SAS? The answer is to use bigroup processing. Generate 1,000 samples in a single data set, with each sample marked by using an ID variable. Then, you can use a by variable in the analysis procedure to run 1,000 analyses and save the statistic of interest for each by group in an output data set. The distribution of the 1,000 statistics approximates the sampling distribution of the statistic. Here's a concrete example. Suppose you want to know the sampling distribution of the mean for random samples of size 10 drawn from the uniform distribution on the interval 0, 1. The data step on this slide creates 1,000 samples, each identified by a value of the sample ID variable. The first 10 observations are the first sample. The next 10 are the second sample, and so on. You can call PROC means and use the by statement to obtain 1,000 sample means. The distribution of those sample means approximates the sampling distribution of the mean for samples of size 10. Notice that the means procedure uses the no print option to suppress the display of 1,000 tables. You don't want to view these tables, so why even create them? Instead, the output statement writes the 1,000 statistics to an output data set. That, in fact, is tip number seven, suppress output during simulation. You never want to print tables for thousands of bigroups. For a simple computation such as the mean of 10 observations, it takes longer to display the ODS table than it does to compute the statistic. Instead, use the no print option, or use ODS to suppress output. In a similar way, you might want to turn off the notes to the SAS log and suppress the creation of nodes in the ODS results window, which is shown in the lower right. For procedures that do not support the no print option, you can use these simple macros. Use the ODS off macro to turn off the ODS system, including ODS graphics, prior to calling a procedure. Turn the system on again when the procedure has completed. A typical Monte Carlo simulation, therefore, looks something like this template. You use the data step to generate all the samples. You turn off ODS. You call a procedure to analyze all the samples. Finally, you analyze properties of the resulting distribution of statistics. Now that we've discussed how to efficiently run a Monte Carlo simulation, here's what you should not do. It's tempting to think, hmm, well, I know how to generate one sample of the data and to analyze it. I'll just write a macro loop that repeats this process and uses proc append to concatenate the statistics into a single file. This is a bad idea. It takes time to initialize, run, and shut down a procedure. If each procedure call performs only a tiny amount of work, most of the time is spent starting and stopping the procedures rather than crunching numbers. In contrast, the by group approach starts and stops procedures only once, and each procedure performs many computations. The by group approach can easily be hundreds of times faster than a macro loop. So tip number eight is to avoid writing macro loops. Tip number nine, learn the many tricks and techniques for simulating data 
that obey regression models. Useful techniques include simple regression, generalized regression models such as logistic and Poisson regression, and mixed models that contain random effects. Here's an example of a simple regression model for two continuous regressors. This example uses the X and Z values from the explanatory data set. 1,000 regression samples are simulated. For each sample, the Y variable is created as a linear combination of the regressors plus a random error. The parameters for this model are 1, 1 half, and 1 third. So if you run a linear regression on any one sample, the parameter estimate should be close to those values. You can call procreg and use the by statement to produce 1,000 parameter estimates. The scatter plot shows the parameter estimates for the coefficients of x and z. You can see that the estimates are centered around the value 1 half comma 1 third, which is the true value of the parameters in the model. Similarly, the intercept estimates are centered around the value 1. Tip number 10. Learn how to use simulation to estimate values for power and sample size. Although PROC power can provide the power for many hypothesis tests, sometimes simulation studies are the only way to estimate power. The technique is not very complicated and it is very useful. Details are given in the paper in the proceedings. This then is the list of 10 tips for simulating data. All these tips and more are presented in the book Simulating Data with SAS. You can download the programs in the book from the book's website. You might also be interested in reading or subscribing to the Do Loop blog, which explores many topics in statistical programming, including simulating data. I hope you've enjoyed this overview of 10 tips for simulating data with SAS. Thanks for watching. For more information about SAS software, go to support.sas.com/statistics.